So a post-phase imaging causes a drop in the MR signal at the interface between water and fat. That's why you see this boundary or border. In comparison, this sequence doesn't have the dark border because this does not tell you about the interface. So why am I showing you these two sequences? Well, they are actually very useful for identifying fat within the organs or elsewhere in the body. Now I want you to focus on the liver. Compare its signal intensity with in-phase imaging and also compare it with the signal intensity of spleen. Do you see any difference? Well, on the in-phase imaging, the liver appears brighter than spleen, but when you compare it with the post-phase imaging, this pattern is reversed. On this sequence, spleen actually appears brighter than the liver. And if you just compare liver between in and opposed phase imaging, you can see that the liver parenchyma has dropped its, its signal. This signal drop suggests that there is fatty infiltration of the liver. In this particular case, it appears diffuse. Why? Because the entire liver parenchyma appears to be involved. If it was, say, perivascular or within a mass or focal, then we would rather see a localized area of uh, drop of signal or like a lump of fat. But that's not how it appears on this case. The fatty distribution is rather diffuse in this liver. So this pattern is called diffuse hepatic steatosis or diffuse fatty infiltration of the liver. And this opposed phase imaging when seen in combination with in-phase imaging is very useful to detect it.